will now discuss the sliding filament theory to understand how the muscles contract. This theory was proposed by two teams of scientists. One was led by A. F. Huxley and the other one was by H. E. Huxley and J. Henson. So they proposed this theory and after we understand how this works, we will be able to correlate the name which has been given to this theory. To understand this, let us draw a sarcomere so that we know what exactly is happening. These two lines which we are drawing, these are the Z lines. And here we are not drawing the sarcolemma and all those things. Attached to Z lines on either side is the thin myofilament that is active. So we are drawing it on both the sides so that we see how this position or these structures change once the filaments slide over. So this is the actin. Here also let us draw this actin attached to this Z line. Thin filament, so comparatively thinner. And myosin, which is the primary myofilament, is the thicker one. So at one end, actin filaments are attached to Z line and the other end they are free. Now let us draw the myosin filaments which are thicker and here we draw this. This is myosin, this is another one, one more myosin and comparatively thicker. Let us name these bands and areas. From Z line to Z line we call it a sarcomere. And this is the structural, functional or the contractile unit of the muscle fiber. The area where we find the complete myosin thread, we call it A band. And inside this A band, the region where we have only myosin. In this part, it is complete myosin, but the edges we have overlap of myosin and actin. That complete band is known as A band. Now inside A band we are talking of a smaller band where we have only myosin. This is known as H band. And in the middle we have seen that there is one line which is actually made up of myomesin. This is known as the M line. So this is the structure. We have also seen the structure of actin and myosin. When this muscle fiber receives a stimulus. So first step is when the muscle receives a stimulus. How does it receive a stimulus? We call that junction a neuromuscular junction. If this is the muscle fiber, here is the exon end bulb and the surface is not smooth. Normally it has this kind of uh, irregular surface. And from here, the neurotransmitter is released. So this is our neuromuscular junction. So first step is the impulse or the stimulus is received in the form of a stimulus which is a neurotransmitter at neuromuscular junction. Now, when this neuromuscular junction receives the stimulus in the form of a, a chemical that is neurotransmitter, what exactly happens? In this case, there is a chemical reaction which is going to take place. Calcium is released. Calcium ions released from T tubules. From T tubules. And this calcium binds to troponin. So when troponin is removed, we would start seeing a cross bridge formation. That means between myosin and actin, a cross bridge would be formed. So cross bridge formation takes place. Third step, troponin and tropo 
sorry, tropo myosin removed. Basically, what we are trying to say here is that the active sites are exposed. Fourth step, actin myosin cross bridge is formed. So this, what we have called is known as actin myosin, sorry, M-Y-O, myosin cross bridge is formed. And this structure which we have drawn is called the cross bridge. So let us see how this cross bridge is formed. If you are able to recall the structure, this was myosin and myosin has its heads exposed. We made this uh, detailed structure earlier. And if this is the actin filament, we said actin has its active sites and these active sites normally remain blocked. So these are blocked with the help of troponin and tropomyosin which is wrapped around it. As soon as calcium ions are released, this troponin has high affinity towards it and this troponin goes and binds with the calcium ions. That means the active sites are now free. Now what happens when the active sites get free? One ATP is hydrolyzed. The energy is released. A part of the energy is used to make actin myosin bridge. How is this actin myosin bridge formed? This head fits into this active site. Here also the head fits into this active site. So a part of the energy which was released was used for this cross bridge formation. So here we said that cross bridge is formed. The second part or a part of energy which is released, that means we are talking about this part, is used by the actin head to give a power stroke. To understand this, we can take a very simple mechanism Say for example, this is the actin uh, active site and this is the myosin head. With the energy release, the myosin head fits into this. We call this structure the cross bridge or actin myosin cross bridge. The second part of the energy will be used by this myosin head which is also acting as ATPase to give a power stroke. Power stroke means the stroke like this. Because or this was the original position. Now when myosin head gives a power stroke, actin is pulled inwards. Energy finished, the bond is broken. And now the myosin head releases from this active site and comes back to its original position. Again, because it is the ATPase, it again hydrolyzes one ATP. Energy used to make actin myosin bridge and a power stroke. Again, energy finished, it comes back to its normal position. Same thing repeats. So what is happening is this actin is moving inwards. And that is why this theory was called sliding filament theory. What we'll do is now we will draw step-by-step uh, -step diagrams to understand what exactly is the original position, then the power stroke and recovery stroke. Let us draw a couple of diagrams to understand how this mechanism works. And we are drawing only a section. Say this is the myosin filament that we are drawing. And here is one head that we have shown. The actin filament, which is the thinner one. This is the actin filament. And actin filament is attached to Z line. So here is this Z line. So this is Z line. This red one which we have drawn is the actin filament and this is the myosin filament. And this bulb like structure is the head. This myosin head it is in its normal position because this is the position when the muscle is relaxed. So when muscle is relaxed myosin head is normal position and the active sites of actin are blocked. We have 
seen the structure of actin that is troponin and tropomyosin which is wrapped around it and they cover these active sites. So these green dots they re represent that active site is blocked with the help of troponin and tropomyosin. Second step when the muscle receives the stimulus. So second step is stimulus received. As soon as stimulus is received, calcium ions are released from T tubules. And this troponin has a very high affinity with calcium. So in the second step, what is going to happen is, let us draw this myosin as it is, the thick band. Same length. But now, because of this troponin gone, this troponin would be lost. Because of this troponin gone, one active site of actin is free. So let me draw this actin filament here. And the Z line is as it is. Other places we have this troponin which is still blocked or which has still blocked the active site. And here is the active site where the myosin head is attached. As soon as myosin head is attached, we call it cross bridge formation. So cross bridge is formed. After this cross bridge formation, this head acts as ATPase and ATP is hydrolyzed. Now when ATP is hydrolyzed, this head is going to give a power stroke. Sorry. So let us see what exactly happens in this power stroke. I'm drawing the original position of the head. And when it gives power stroke, it comes to this position. So this is position normal and this is the power stroke position. So after power stroke position, the actin filament has been pulled inwards. The actin has gone in. This was position 1. From position 1, it has gone to position 2. And because of this, what has happened is, the Z line has also been pulled inwards. And the same thing is going to happen from the other side also. So when Z line moves in, distance between the two Z lines is known as a sarcomere. So when two Z lines come closer, the sarcomere is going to become smaller. And that is why the sarcomere is known as the contractile unit of the muscle fiber. And what exactly has happened here is the active filament slides in to this myosin area. And that is why the name to this theory is sliding filament theory. Once this ATP energy is finished, then the head is going to detach from the active site and it will take a recovery stroke. It will come back to its normal position. So here we are going to write third point that head first gives a power stroke and then it gives a recovery stroke. After recovery stroke, it has come back to its original position. It will come here and again it will bind to a new active site of the actin. And again the same thing, power stroke and recovery. So actin is going to slide in and in. Because of this sliding, there are two distinct changes that we see. Number one, length of sarcomere decreases. And because the entire muscle fiber is made up of sarcomeres, so one sarcomere becomes shorter, the other also becomes shorter. So in, uh, as a result, the complete muscle contracts. One more thing which is visible here is that H zone or H band, it also becomes less. What was H band? The region, if I make one actin here also, so this entire thing was called A band and only the region where we have only myosin, myosin. That was called the H band. This one was H band. But because actin is sliding in, in the next situation, the actin would come in here. So the H band has 
become shorter. In the third situation, actin would come even closer. So H band has become even shorter. So here, length of H band decreases. What has happened to the length of A band? A band was the complete length of myosin. So here, this is A band. After actin sliding in, it is still the same. After actin sliding in more, even it, after that also it is same. That means length of A band remains same. Only sarcomere edge bands, they are going to become smaller because of the sliding of actin filaments. These are certain changes which are seen. And because the actin is sliding in, that is why this theory is known as sliding filament theory. Its complete mechanism, that is the electrical and biochemical mechanism of this working, was given by another scientist that we'll take up in the next section.